Ooh, it must be time to watch another Godzilla movie because I can clearly feel my Taco Bell Zilla cup in my jacket. This is why you should always hold on to things. Just in case decades later you want to review Godzilla Raids again. And does Godzilla raid again in this sequel? Oh, you bet your ass he does. This second Godzilla film was thrown into production mere weeks after the release of the first movie, 1954's Gojira. However, the first film's director, Ishiro Honda, was unavailable due to working on love makeup, so Motor Yoshi Oda was hired by the producers, who wanted a quick turnaround time over fear of losing momentum after Gojira. So the film was released in April of 1955, months after the first movie, clearly making it the Child's Play 3 of its time. Oh, but that's Godzilla Raids again. My American Godzilla Cup should be a good indicator that we'll be watching the Gigantus the Fire Monster version. <laughs> oh, don't goddamn my fire sauce! The American rights to Raids Again was purchased by the same producers who brought us the U.S. version of Gojira, Godzilla King of the Monsters. The original plan was to use Godzilla Raids Again footage for a new film called The Volcano Monsters, which would have included new footage of Godzilla. However, the production company closed shop, so the American producers and the new investors decided to dub the movie instead with actors like George Takei, Key Luke and Paul Frees. Despite that little hiccup, the retitled movie and the poster promises there has been nothing like it before, except for that other movie. Oh, but this isn't Godzilla, no, no. In this, his name has been changed to Gigantus, because as producer Paul Schriebman said, it was to give audiences the impression they were seeing a new monster and to avoid confusion since Godzilla died in the previous movie. Oh, if that's the logic, they should have just renamed him Roy. Of course, we know the movie is going to open with new narration for the American version and also the dawn of erection stock footage. I'm sure this movie will be way different. The first one had Raymond Burr as Steve Martin. This one, I'm positive, will have a young William Shatner as Martin Short. Although, after a while, I'm not entirely positive that's a real rocket going through space. And clearly, Warner Brothers, who released the film, is putting in heavy symbolism for you to think it's a universal film, just in case it bombs. And now we find out, what version of the title card are we gonna get? Oh yeah, I'm sure that's the original title screen. The movie also uses music from other movies of the time, like Kronos, Project Moonbase, and The Deer Slayer. Plus, they must have gotten rid of their original narrator because now they have a second narrator. Kaio is a pleasant little community near the city of Osaka in Japan. It should be pointed out that this is the only Godzilla movie where his spine doesn't glow. They needed that extra budget money for the stock footage. Our hero is a tuna hunter named Sukiyoki who spots something suspicious. Sukiyoka calling main office. I've spotted a big school of tuna. As you can see, they're translating all of this to the dub actors. Word needs to get out immediately that ships are not safe in case a giant Charlie the Tuna comes to tear apart the city. After the flirting, of course. Are you tired, my dear? Not too tired to go dancing with you tonight. Tuna hunters were like the James Bond of Japan. No one could keep their pants on around them. Get your own guy. Kiss me again. I'm all yours. <laughs> it was right of the U.S. version to leave in the part where the operators bang. The other tuna hunter is Kobayashi, although his plane appears to be having engine problems. <laughs> Whatever. We don't care. We don't want to have sex with him nearly as much. This is all obviously sabotage from the Chicken of the Sea people. Clearly, he's gonna be on whatever monster-ridden island is nearby. Iwato Island, a barren, bleak series of uninhabited rocks. He quickly checked Wikipedia on his phone to give us a small backstory on the islands. We don't need to see his plane landing. Just know he's safe on Skull Island, and the plane doesn't have a scratch on it. We gotta return it safely to the people we rented it from. However, I'm sure this is the producers calling in to tell them to speed through the setup fast. I could hardly wait to see Kobayashi. We built a fire, and then I noticed his injured wrist. 
This may be moving at a quick pace, but it's giving me serious Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla flashbacks. Ah, no, no, no! I'm not too thrilled about the dubbing here or the jokes. Trying to please a woman is like swimming the ocean. <laughs> He's gonna use that at his next improv night. He's the funniest tuna hunter. <laughs> I can think of one monster who clearly hates comedy. I see the monster fight is already happening, but I'm more distracted by Kubayashi's unconvincing voice. What are those things? I don't know. He's obviously from a city in Japan called Mayberry. If Godzilla sounds different to you in this version, it's because it's largely replaced by the same roar as the movie's other monster, Anguirus. Anyway, they're off the island now and are telling the police on these monsters before looking at mugshots. Oh, this is it? Yes, that's clearly him. I never forget a face. They instantly name Godzilla Gigantus. That way, this greedy-ass scientist can claim the monster for his own, while giving us some backstory on the other monster. Murderers. Original plundering murderers. Who killed everything in their way. Why are you prejudiced against the Ankylosaurus, bro? It's best we remind ourselves of the kind of damage Godzilla can do. I remember the terrible sight in the city of Tokyo. You shall see what the monster did. Yeah, it was only a few months ago, just in case you forgot. Though this does give us a pitch for a delightful Godzilla children's show. I'm not scared anymore. This is just adorable, even with the lava. But enough about that. You want dinosaurs? And not just dinosaurs, but dinosaurs that can fight. Let's spice up this presentation. Here's how the dinosaurs wiped out everyone's internet back in the Cretaceous period. We know that Raids Again is a lesser Godzilla movie, so let's at least thrill you with footage of how haunting and impressive the first one was. Never forget. It was something I shall never forget as long as I live. But the real question is, how in the hell did you all forget this? And some of these people look like they're having trouble following the plot. Didn't you finally manage to destroy him? With the Oxygen Destroyer. Huh? What? So can we try that again? How does one get this oxygen destroyer? While he's processing that, an older movie is as good a time as any to show some older commercials as we try processing them! Hey fella! Ooh. Do you like Kern's bread? Ooh. Well, gee, I don't know, I guess... You gotta be positive! <laughs> I suppose you're back for some more monster shit. <laughs> Whatever. I'm here for a love story. I wonder if they'll attack. No. Oh, they better. The audience is going to ask for their money back. Plenty of warnings are going out, sending all forces to distract the world before they ask, how did Godzilla come back in the first place? He goes by Freddy Krueger rules. He's just back. It's even hitting the newspapers. They're playing it safe by calling him Gigantus in case Godzilla sues for libel. As long as you lock your doors, you should be safe. Others look toward the heavens for help. Others listened at home. At least for those who are watching the news and not crowded around the TV for an all-new episode of Life of Riley. Most are doing a good job of following orders. Keep at least two tuna hunters with you at all time. Don't ask questions. You'll thank us when the time comes. You must see that thing as a cat. Don't talk like that. Last night in the automobile, you thought you were being chased by a cow. <laughs> <laughs> see, they need him for the comic relief. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have said anything. What did I miss? Is everything fine now? Is this the new Willie Scott show in Shanghai? They went out and danced and generally made merry at all the nightclubs and restaurants. Oh my god, all this stock footage is like a Godzilla movie crossed with a Mondo Kane knockoff. I guess they celebrated too early because a record scratch puts a stop to this tuna fish under the sea dance. They need to get out of here and trample themselves to death before a monster does. Good thing there's a blackout going on. That way it'll look as dark and cool as King of the Monsters. Plain shot. I guess we're done stalling now. Great. This is the part where they try to crowbar this into the Cloverfield universe. With that incorrect roar, it seems like there's something wrong with Godzilla's throat. It's throwing me off. Someone get him a Ricola. 
and move fast. Get to the nearest Walgreens and race back with bags and suitcases full of fast and effective cough drops. Though at least one person was smart enough to drive. <laughs> Those idiots will get there much faster and the roof will shield us from the lava rain and whatever Godzilla's doing. Oh, he's being a dick, I see. We are safe here. With no buildings around, no one is going to destroy this place. Plus... Hey! Get a move on! I've got my true love, Kobayashi, by my side. The flares are meant to lure Godzilla away and also distract my ADHD ass. That must be why it seems like a different movie starts. One prison truck contained a group of the most dangerous convicts in the land. Great, now it's the original version of Shane Black's Predator. Hopefully these guards can stop them from escaping. Hey, what's up? Totally appropriate reaction to that. One of the convicts threw a fit. Ah, what a guy. Jeez, if only defeating Godzilla was as easy as escaping from prison. Eh, there's not really any murderers among this bunch. Just a group of convicts who are practicing slapstick without a license. be why this is the one where Godzilla wins with a hilarious eye poking. Sorry, but I'm now caught up in this escaped prisoner story. It's like the movie is padded out with the events from Red Zone Cuba. There, now that that's over, let's rejoin our monster movie. It appears this time Godzilla hasn't caused the most damage. It was those idiot prisoners who have now lured Godzilla back to the shore. Damn you, ADHD beast! Plane shot. I'm sure all of these weapons will stop him. You know, you could save yourself a lot of firepower if you just tie his shoelaces together. It's pretty cool how the Godzilla puppet has a spray built into it whenever he breathes his atomic breath. I'm sure that'll come in handy since Anguirus is back. They have to keep fighting since it's the first movie where Godzilla fights another monster. There's different styles to how the monster fighting is shot. Effects director, I.G. Subaraya, wanted the fighting shot at a slow motion, but when one camera was accidentally left overcranked, it resulted in some fast motion effects, which Subaraya ended up liking and left in. And it goes with the spray they got on a wholesale and are gonna use the hell out of it. You guys shouldn't be so chilly. What, with everything being on fire and all? Oh, what? I don't know. Wait for the cowardly guy to say something. Let's get out of here! What, are you kidding? These fights are getting good. And think of the insurance money we're gonna get out of this. But can we get back to the romance? From her father's house, Hidemi looked out the window and saw the awesome sight. Ma'am, people are dead. I enjoy the fast motion, though sometimes it does look like a Clockwork Orange-style sped-up sex scene. And doesn't this bar have any bouncers? Ooh, that'll stop him. No, they just rebuilt that Puzz 3D, you sons of bitches. Who are they gonna turn to when the fire truck doesn't work? Great, Dewey, Cheatham, and King Haudora are still here. It's like these screaming cowards are too good to be inside of a building that instantly turns to rubble. You know, even when I can see how it's fake, I am still impressed with these ambitious effects for the time. A young Menachem Golan is taking notes for Superman 4. With the US version being released in 1959, I wonder if any Americans in the audience were like, hey, this is a ripoff of that Godzilla King of the Monsters movie we saw in 56. He even looks the same. Whenever there's a crowd like this in one of these movies, I bet one of them is always thinking, I wonder if just shooting him in the head will work. Sure, his breath can ruin whole buildings, but that's not anything a bullet to the head can't stop. Godzilla's thinking is way better. He defeats Anguirus with a fierce hickey, causing him to pass out over fear of how he'll explain it to his parents and add insult to injury. He just pissed on him. Everyone is watching the death of Anguirus. It's being shown while the movie's being featured on tonight's Fengoolie. 
Here, this will give you a better visual aid. Let's go back to some footage of the first movie again. I hope the rest of the movie is just them sweeping away the rubble. It's a love letter to our nation's janitors. Man, this is all crazy, right? Hello. Did you see what happened? No, I didn't see the monster fight. Please fill me in. Of course I saw it! God, why is it so bleak here? How would you like a change? Huh? <laughs> Just kidding. We needed some of that folksy Kubayashi charm to liven up the scene. Apparently, many of the names are mispronounced in the American version, but I'm not one to judge because I'm pretty sure I've been mispronouncing names this whole review. It doesn't really matter because we've got comedy to get to. All men are like fish in a woman's net. She got you there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a man with his intestines hanging out five feet from you. As if the situation couldn't get worse, it's winter now. Though our heroes are back to work, it's cod season. So they need to go hunting for cod and no discovering monsters. In fact, to play it safe, we're just going to send you inside of a snow globe. They're very excited to be back in fish season. Arby's brought back their crispy fish sandwich, and Popeye's now has a new cod sandwich. What a time to be alive! Though their means of communication may be a little limited. Somehow that is the most unbelievable thing in this movie. But they have fun. With it being winter, it must mean the Christmas party is coming up. And other surprises. You can tell me. Not now. It's a surprise. That would spoil all the fun. <laughs> Ooh, I bet this is where they meet Peter Sellers. Oh, and these two are engaged now. Godzilla better stay gone because I want a wedding scene, damn it. You know what they say. If you have time remaining in a movie, just get drunk. <laughs> I bet that's what they were really singing. Unfortunately, Godzilla is back and destroyed one of their ships. He probably mouth pissed on that too, which of course means plane shot. And let's dig up an old World War II newsreel while we're at it. Though this is the American version, so we'll help too with this monster problem. Congress was called into emergency session and plans were quickly put into effect. Look, we didn't give you exactly what you wanted, but we passed a new law banning large fries. It's now up to Sukioka to dump an entire loot of tuna into Godzilla's mouth. I'm sure that's better than what Kobayashi is planning. Would you please tell me something? Sure, Kobayashi, you're the laziest man on Mars. He's gotta be nearby. Whenever there's a giant Godzilla turd, he has to be within a mile or two. Let's give them a few minutes to find this beast so that Lloyd can do his segment that he promised us. And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week. All right, I need you to get behind him. We're gonna do the Heimlich Maneuver. No, I can't. Okay, I'll talk you through it. No, I can't get behind him. We're conjoined twins. <laughs> what? Oh, well, uh, that's new. Damn, they still haven't found him yet. Or have they? You know, that's probably just a big reptar bar he put there to fool you. Oh, did someone say reptar bar? I can think of one hungry person nearby. Kobayashi waved back at me, happy to have found me so readily. It was best we left Kobayashi there as a human sacrifice to please the monster. All of the plane shots have led to this. Teaming up with the boat shots to fight Godzilla. Seems like it should be easy enough. Just drop a giant brick on his head. Or let Kobayashi come in with big, Hello boys, I'm back! Energy. Told ya. Yes, Kobayashi's death may have killed comedy, but it did save the day as they use it to their advantage to cause an avalanche once they stop mourning. Kobayashi died. What? Huh? What do you say? Yes. <laughs> That's believable. Don't seem too sad. Should we pretend to cry? Well, we already have a picture picked out for his obituary. Goodbye, Kobayashi. You showed us the way out. Truly, it was Kobayashi who was teaching us. Okay, man, we found pieces of Kobayashi here and here. If we scoop up all of his parts, we can sew him together as a big parade float when we defeat the monster. 
it's not too hard to defeat Godzilla here. He's stuck in an ad for Godzilla Cola. I do like the ice effects, which really was made from ice gathered from a skating rink. It's gonna come in handy with the barrels of Diet Coke and more barrels of Mentos to defeat the bastard. Apparently, causing an avalanche made someone else come in to dub his voice. <laughs> oh, Big Lloyd, Godzilla never would have stood a chance against your explosion powers. Sure, you'd think his atomic breath could melt the ice, but never mind that. He's gonna use it all on this guy out of pure spite. I'm taking you bastards to an icy cold hell with me. Godzilla is defeated like Ted Danson from Creep Show. It was worth it to destroy your boat, you pricks. I'm not sorry. He'll be fine. But until he comes back, the stock footage factories have all been rebuilt and are celebrating this temporary defeat of Godzilla, but with a shocking conclusion. And as we looked up at the moon in the sky, a feeling of peace came into our hearts. The twist ending is that might be the moon, or Jupiter, I'm not sure. There's a lot of day for night in this movie. Well, this wasn't the biggest hit in the franchise. Plus, it was the last Godzilla movie released by Warner Brothers up until the 2014 Godzilla. After a theatrical run, which paired it in a double feature with teenagers from outer space, the U.S. owners lost any interest in wanting to sell television rights to the movie, so the film went relatively unseen post-theatrical release until the 80s. God bless you, video treasures, and of course the 2007 DVD release, which contained both the American and Japanese versions. This was definitely a Godzilla film that spoke to all of us in the audience who may not be military or scientists, but we can say dumb jokes and promptly stand up to monsters and then crash and burn because we don't know how to fly a plane. This is bad.